Welcome back to another Tuesday Thursday live with Jordan and uh, today we're featuring one of our primate species which is the Pattus monkey. Now the Pattus monkey is an old world species of monkey meaning it comes from the continents of Africa. Now this monkey is very uh, unique from other species of monkey you might think of because they're actually a terrestrial monkey which means that they're a ground dweller. These guys actually inhabit the more semi-arid regions of Africa which makes them quite adaptable to the deforestation that's happening in those areas and in fact because the uh, deforestation that's going on these guys are actually doing quite well in those areas that have been cleared and uh, cut and are drying out and dying unfortunately however they have adapted to it. Now the Pattus monkey, monkey uniquely enough, is also the fastest monkey in the world uh, for when you consider them as a running monkey. These guys can go up to about 35 miles an hour without even trying. So what we're going to talk about is a little bit of their physical features, and I'm sure you can see them behind me here. We're going to talk about physical characteristics, and then we're going to actually go into more of the social structure, which is very unique to them, and just your primates in general. So first things first. We can distinguish our Pattis monkeys, specifically because of that white mustache you see. That gentleman that was just down here, his name is Georgie Boy, and he is our male of our group, and he's accompanied by three females. Now, of course, they have that characteristic or the stereotypical white mustache, and then they have that nice orange or red or copper coloring down their back. Now, their body length usually achieves about 30 some odd inches from the head to the rear end, and then that tail is about another 30 some odd inches behind it. Now, inside of that mouth there, they have some very, very sharp canine teeth. Much like many of our primates, they are very capable of inflicting very serious, very dangerous uh, bites uh, to uh, the predators that may be attacking them. And uniquely enough, being a terrestrial monkey, meaning they're a ground monkey, quite often they will actually engage the predators that come after them and actually fight because they do not generally treat themselves due to the absence of them in the natural environment. Now, another neat thing about these monkeys, and many other monkeys in general, if you ever see a monkey smiling at you, don't smile back. What that actually is, is the monkey sizing you up. It's them showing off their teeth, showing off those canines, and when you smile back, you're showing them yours. And definitely, you're not going to win that fight. So now, moving on is that tail. I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but that tail makes up another 30 some odd inches behind them. That tail, you know, generally on our more arboreal species is used for balance and guiding throughout the uh, treetops. For these guys on the ground, it's more or less just a, uh, it can be used as a warning flag. If they're ever in trouble, they can throw that tail in the air, but it really doesn't serve as much of a purpose for like other primates because it's also not prehensile like some of our capuchins and things like that. Now one more neat thing about these monkeys when we're talking about predators, when they might get in trouble, they have very specific vocalizations. And in fact, the adult males, the adult females, and our juveniles each make very specific distress calls, and that's what warns a group of potential threats. Now what we're going to talk about now is more of that social structure. So now, Pattis monkeys in the wild, they can have about 20, 30, 40, 50, up to 60 some odd animals in their big group. And within that group, you might have little fractures of the group, and I'll explain that in a minute. Now, in a normal setting, you'll have one big dominant male, like our boy, our boy Georgie here, and then you have a bunch of females underneath him. That's made up of his, uh, his girlfriends, and of course, their female offspring. Generally, when males are born, they'll stay with mom for a couple years and then generally leave that group and often the young males will form what we call bachelor groups and they hang out together. Now those males generally will mature between that two to four year mark and all those males are generally leaving that group by the age of three. If there's a uh, one staying till about four years of age, it's, uh, it's more of a mama's boy, all right? So now going back a little bit, so this social structure, you've got those females with their female offspring. Now, what's very unique about our Pattis monkeys is that the uh, females, uh, the lead females, the more dominant females and their offspring, their female offspring, um, they interact with one another and it's not so much a dominance issue, but they do respect each other's uh, lineage, the maternal lineages. And sometimes females will fight. And what happens is that after a female fights, and it generally is within her own lineage, um, the other monkeys act very different to the individuals that engage in that fight. And what normally happens is they make up. How do they make up? Generally, it's initiated by the dominant female, which will go over and start grooming the one that she had the uh, offense with. And uh, then that way that monkey's brought back into the, uh, to the family unit, into that social structure. Now the males, I told you, those young males go out into their uh, bachelor groups. But then when we hit breeding season, what actually happens is our dominant male, he doesn't really 
fight off young males that are coming into his group. In fact, he's more focused on just breeding the females there. And some of those more uh, less dominant males that join that group and try to mate, they're also not fighting. Everyone's goal is to simply uh, reproduce, to procreate, uh, I guess as quickly as possible and to spread that genetic seed. Then after that breeding season, generally, uh, sometimes the dominant male might uh, be overthrown, but generally those, uh, uh, those bachelor males will leave the group again, leaving that dominant male in place. Of course, uh, normal amongst all of our, our lions and, and even wolves and animals, of course that pack leader or that dominant animal is eventually uh, tossed aside, but that's generally due to old age and when he becomes a little more, I guess, impotent and isn't passing on the seed, the females move on to a new male. Now, I'm going to stand up here, and right over in this box, we're going to try to explain to you what we have. Now, here at Animal Adventure, we do a big focus on enrichment. Now, what enrichment is, it's providing uh, resources, items, that mentally and physically stimulate our animals. Happy animals means that they're safe, they're procreating, but they're also not aggressive towards each other, to themselves, to the keepers or to the exhibit. So we provide quite a bit of enrichment here to make sure our animals are having a nice solid lifestyle. Now what we have here is what we'd call like a treat box or a puzzle box. Inside of that box, you have a bunch of hay, but scattered throughout that hay are marshmallows, seeds, uh, peanut butter, kale, fresh fruit, all kinds of things mixed around, which requires the monkeys to reach in and fish around with their arm or take that hay and throw it up in the air if they'd like and find all those neat treats that are there. Now, really quick, talking about their diet, the Pattus monkey is also an omnivore. So like I said, there's a mix of different things in there. In the wild, naturally, they'd be eating fruit, they'd be eating seeds, and they actually will eat eggs and small vertebrates like reptiles. Um, so what I'm gonna try to do here is back off because generally in these videos, we want you to see the animal, not me so much. So I'm gonna step aside, give them some space, and we're gonna see if George and the girls will engage that box and you can see what we're talking about and how they interact with it. So a little uneventful, but, it, but over time, obviously the monkeys will allow our male, the dominant of their group, to kind of get in there, fish around, and then once he kind of gets his, uh, his way with the box, gets the treats out he wants, then you'll see our uh, more dominant female, the bigger of the three, which you did see come down briefly. She'll dig through there, and then the two younger females will jump in there, and within about an hour today, this will be destroyed all over the exhibit, and we'll come in here and have to clean up. Now, one last thing we want to touch on is, of course, conservation status. This is one of those things we try to continue to talk about. But uh, these guys actually are of least concern. And again, this goes back to their prolific nature with breeding and their adaptability in that semi-arid area, which is unfortunately uh, commonly produced through to de due to deforestation in the natural environment. So on that note, we're going to wrap up this, this Tuesday session. Tune in again on Thursday at noon. We'll bring in another animal. And what will it be? We don't know yet. Thank you.